So, first of all, I feel like, you know, you're, you're in a relationship. If you're living with a person, if you're living with, like, somebody that you're in a relationship with, there's a lot of love. They, they really care about you. They really, really love you. And so it's not so much about, you know, how your partner feels. It's more about, are you ready? Are you ready for the love that they have to give? Can you offer them the same type of love and devotion? Because it's a two-way street. And if you're not, what are you willing to do about it? So I feel like that's pretty much, you know, what this energy is coming out as. So in relationship, you have a lot of control here. So this is your card. This is representative of you. In the major arcana, arcana, it basically means that you have a tremendous deal of control. If you choose to engage in conflict or if you choose to be like, oh, I don't know if this person's right for me and nitpick, you know, because sometimes you can do that to make things a little bit more exciting. Uh, nitpick or, you know, behave in a way where you kind of throw like, it's like pretend uh, jealousy drama, you know, throw it into the relationship to make things a little bit more exciting. You can do that, but then it's going to corrode the foundation of the relationship. Or you can choose to, at the same time, um, accept the partner for what they are, overlook, overlook some of these flaws. I feel like that's up to you as well. So you have a lot of control here. You have a lot of sway on how you want to move the relationship along on what you plan to do. I feel like for some of you, there is a major, major problem here in your current relationship where there are trust issues, there is power control struggles, like power struggles, control issues. Uh, one person is not able to succumb to the, the other. And I also feel trust issues that have recently crept into the picture. You're trying to give them the benefit of the doubt, but every time there is conversation, it creates all-out war. It creates hostility. It creates resentment. And so you're trying to, on the one hand, get to the bottom of this, but on the other hand, I feel almost like there are lingering trust issues here that you're not able to overlook and you're not going to be getting back to this uh, person or you're not going to be, you know, able to sweep things under the rug anymore. For some of you, you might be dealing here with a fire sign. Sagittarius, Aries or Leo, uh, fire signs have been coming out a lot for your general reading. So I feel like it's um, trust issues, control issues as well. And I, I do feel trust issues here with the Seven of Swords, okay? So I apologize for that. Okay, so here's this fantasy once again. Seven of uh, Cups. Let me talk about this. The Seven of Cups is kind of like that pipe dream, you know, that ideal, being very idealistic, being heavily uh, romantic, and looking at a situation and wanting what could be rather than looking at a, a, a situation for what it truly is. I feel like for some of you, you have somebody that really, really loves you. And we could have here a, um, a water sign. This is heavy, heavy water energy. Seven of cups, ten of cups. This is somebody that wants the whole nine yards with you. You know, they want the romance, the passion, the chemistry, the family, the kids, the house. And um, they're very, very sure about what they want. And on the one hand, I feel like they can also be a little bit idealistic. But water signs are heavily romantic by nature. So they're always going to be idealistic, whereas you're an air sign. So I feel like this might be in a way kind of like your energy where you're, yes, you do want this. Eventually, you do want this because it's secure, it's warm, it's, it's nice. You know, everyone wants this. But I feel like you're at a point in your life where 
you still want to explore life. You still want options. You still don't, you, you might not want to be bogged down with family, children, house, mortgage, you know, like this. Because although this is great, you have other options that are on the table. And you feel like if I, you know, choose this, all of these options are going to be taken away from me. Am I ready for it? So there's a lot of fears of commitment here. There's also fears about, am I making the right choice? There's also fears about, this is what everybody wants. So if I have this, then I would have the one thing that everybody wants. But is it right for me? So I, I do see fears and reassessment. Reassessing what's really Im important to you on an individual level. Is this something that society expects of you, family expects of you, or do you want something else for yourself? So there's a lot of questions here. There's a lot of illusions. And there's also this promise from possibly a love relationship partner of the whole nine yards, the stability. And I feel like once you have that stability, yes, it can be everything that you've wanted. Yes, it can bring you a lot of professional, you know, um, admiration or even professional stability because you know when the home life is stable a lot of the times professionally we it's easier for us to grow because we have more I guess more things at stake you know if there's mortgage if there's family if there's children we're gonna work really hard at our finances right at our professional life developing our professional careers and so I feel like, yes, it's going to help you stabilize yourself. It's going to bring about that sense of urgency and responsibility. But if you're not ready, no matter when these things come in, no matter how they come in, if you're not ready, you're not going to build on it. And it's going to, while it's wonderful and great, and it, it can be very emotionally nurturing, it can be very financially stabilizing. If you're not ready for it, you're not going to build on it and you're going to let a very good opportunity kind of like waste away because you're still wondering about alternatives. You're still wondering. But on the other hand, I have all of these options that are available. So Libras, you have a lot of great things here. And I feel like you are in a really good relationship with another person, but you're still kind of like admiring greener pastures. You're not ready to put in the work. And, you know, I, I feel like deep down as the, the scale of the zodiac, you are very sensitive to imbalances when they affect you. But you also need to kind of like think on the other side. Is it fair for the other person to wait around? Is it fair if I'm not able to give them 100% because I'm still scoping out other territories? So I feel like the problem with air signs in general is um, they're able to love, but they like to weigh out the pros and cons when they make a love decision. And I feel like that's what's happening here. On the one hand, you want this. And then on the other hand, you know, it's like, what else is out there? And if you keep second guessing, I feel like the opportunities will slip, slip you by. So you have a loving relationship partner, but it seems as if you're not 100% committed. That's what it feels like to me. And so the third cluster here, we have the Princess of Swords. So this is, I feel, your energy. Um, this is a card mainly about like somebody who's um, not overly emotional and they're not overly like a sentimental person. Okay, so I feel like for some of you, it might be difficult for you to make emotional connections with another person where you're kind of like barking up the wrong tree, going after people that are not right for you. Or I feel like, you know, you, there might have been some complaints about relationship partners, from relationship partners, uh, exes, you know, people that you've dated and where they say like you're emotionally kind of not there. So there's an element here about needing to kind of reinvent ourselves, needing to really think about 
how to open up with the death card. The death card deals with transformation. So it's kind of like revisiting. How do we communicate? Are we warm and fuzzy and approachable? Or are we like so wrapped up in our head that we like to prove to other people how smart we are. We like to prove to other people all the things that we know. And then at the end of the day, it, you know, a date turns into something very platonic. So something that has a lot of potential just kind of becomes, you know, forever in that platonic or the friend zone. So I feel like many of you, you're at a point right now where you're trying to figure out how do other people see me? Am I approachable? Am I earnest? Am I easy to talk to? Or do I just live so much in my head that I kind of drive people away? So for those who are single, you're doing some major reassessment. And I also feel as well with the world card, it's kind of like interacting with a lot of different people and people that are very, very different from you. And so through the interaction, people who might be culturally, ethnically, linguistically different from you, in the process of interacting with them, you're going to fill in all these knowledge gaps about yourself. You're going to learn more about how people behave. You're going to also learn more about how to be a lot more approachable, how to let your guard down, how to, you know, come across as someone who's worldly and just good to be around, I feel, because this is not an overly warm, affectionate, approachable type of a person. This is somebody who's like, you know, um, kind of like a know-it-all. So I feel like there's this energy here. Yes, you're very, very smart. And, you know, you're the least scattered of all the air signs. But this energy here can make it seem like it's very, the, the interaction with you is very platonic. It's great. It's fun. But it's, um, it's skirting the surface. It doesn't really have depth. And so this is the month where we start to create layers and depths in our conversation with others, in our interaction with others, in order for us to be seen as someone who has depth, who is approachable, who's likable, and who has a lot to offer. Um, I mentioned for, I believe, the Gemini people. This is a person, male or female, with the world card that is very, very highly sought after. They're, you know, like they embody uh, a lot of depth. They embody a lot of charisma, a lot of charm, a lot of beauty. But I feel like it's not just physical beauty. The beauty shines from within. So I feel like you might be coming across somebody like this that you really, really, really admire. It could be somebody of the same uh, gender, the same sex, where you wish like you could be this person. Or you are uh, encountering this person in your dating environment and you're trying to, you know, uh, emulate or even, you know, try to figure out why is this person so fascinating. Um, I feel for some of you, it could be here. Um, one of the later signs, so, you know, possibly even a Scorpio. So I have Leo, Taurus, Scorpio, possibly a fixed sign as well. So Leo, Taurus, Leo, Taurus, Scorpio, possibly Aquarius. So the, the fixed sign, somebody who is strong in their beliefs, who's very opinionated, and it's somebody who has a lot of depth, who understands themselves on a very deep level, fixed signs know who they are and so i feel like you're encountering somebody like that that has this uh energy that really draws you okay so if you're single and out there looking leo taurus leo taurus aquarius uh scorpio the fixed signs so let me see in terms of spiritual advice for you guys for the month of november okay so i'm gonna t yeah four cards so let's talk about this here. We have the Four of Wands. And the Four of Wands is a situation where a relationship or a marriage has uh, kind of broken down. And I usually think about this as like, you know, somebody with children, like um, there's children in the mix because we have here the parents. We have the Queen of Wands and the King of Wands. Okay, so you might be dealing with another fire sign, someone who's really, really strong. They're energy is kind of combative they're intimidating they're you you might still be very very attracted to them and so you might be dealing with this person 
where you are going through the legal um, you know, steps with them, like the separation, uh, the legal extraction process, or some of you are involved with somebody who is in the midst of a divorce, in the midst of a separation, in the midst of you know, some failed relationship. And we have as well the third party, three of cups, basically indicates third party interfering in a relationship. So I feel like some of you might be dabbling in this or might be caught in the middle of this. And I feel like the couple, if you're caught in the middle, I feel like the couple are still together. So you might be misled, okay? Into thinking that they're completely d go, uh, done or the marriage is dissolved. I feel like the marriage is on the rocks but they're still very much, you know, committed to one another. So I don't feel this is going to disband anytime soon. And I feel like the realization that you might be the third party comes in for this month. So Libras, please, please be very, very careful. Okay. There are a lot of energies here that indicate to me truths coming to light, things kind of spilling out. So just, you know, take care of yourself accordingly. Okay.